Oh. Okay. So let's call a meeting. March 5th, approximately 7 o'clock, just to be accurate. <laughs> uh, we have a message that February 18th minutes will be available at our next meeting, so we have the minutes to approve. However, we do have uh, bills to pay. I uh, would entertain a motion to approve payments in the amount of $253,968.70. That's a budget cluster. <laughs> General fund uh, $3,628.92. Fire fund $27,833.64. Cemetery fund $6966.35. PMS billing $3229.74. Road bridge $3612.22. And $4901 capital fire house project fund. $208,000, excuse me, $208,697.91. Get used to those big numbers, folks. Uh, is there a motion? Uh, I would make that motion with the, the statement that it's really hard for me to, to grasp uh, figures that large. I'll second the motion without the comment. <laughs> Further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote please? Mm -hmm. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correspondence? Look at the other way around. We have Zoning Commission meeting minutes from January 16th. Uh, we have uh, Grinnell Mill Profit and Loss statement for 2017. Uh, we have a um, an announcement from the Ohio Cemetery Association of the upcoming spring maintenance seminar Thursday, April 5 at the Forest Hill Cemetery in Piqua. Uh, anticipate, uh, anticipate attending that. Um, I mean, notice from uh, Stephanie Hayden about her changing, her changing jobs in the county. Um, a newsletter from Community Solutions regarding uh, Agraria and all kinds of events and things that are happening and are going to happen. Uh, transitioning to the organic. Oh, did anyone attend that on March 1st? The uh, workshop, the long workshop? No. Alrighty then. There's one coming this week. Did anyone attend the Sugar Shack tour? Yes. Okay, there's one. Did that was in Agraria. That was land trust. Well, it's in Agraria's upcoming events, so our community solutions. <laughs> yeah, they, actually, the March 1st thing was the Yellow Springs Village Environmental Commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one I went to. Or that's, I went to the evening presentation last month. This is the all day workshop and the evening presentation, which wasn't marked on it, but that was the uh, uh, and then there's a Regenerating Landscapes and Conservation 2.0, Thursday, March 8th, which will be upcoming here, and Friday, March 9th. Friday with plants. There's a bunch of stuff. Oh, holy mackerel. There's two pages worth. Anyway, mm -hmm. consult that for interesting things coming up. A uh, message from a uh, village resident uh, regarding a uh, uh, drainage problem on Lamont Drive. We will have those. <laughs> no. What a strange thing to receive. It has been. Especially <laughs> after this little bit, <laughs> right? Yeah. Has been who sent that? That was uh, Beth Bridgman. Um, we also have ESC uh, meeting agenda for Mr. Crockett for the uh, meeting coming up. It didn't already happen. 3 7. It didn't already happen. Oh, 3 7? 3 7. Oh. That's Wednesday. Yeah. All right, never mind. Sorry. I got the date wrong here. That'll be different. Okay. Um, Message from Johnny Burns, or excuse me, from Chief Altman, that John Burns had advised them that they have they won't be able to do the flow test on the hydrants until March 20th. Uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed that they will be sufficient to allow us to delete the 27 plus thousand dollar domestic water pump in the uh, firehouse. Keep your fingers crossed. A uh, message. Oh yeah, back and forth from Dana Stortz of the environmental environmental. Department Services in Green County about 
but we constantly do this to remind us when we can take tires out and when we can't, whether we have to pay for them, whether we don't. We never have to pay for the tires. We never have to pay for tires. We have <laughs> you just have to, you just have to call have them to tell be there. them. Right. I can take them down by the ain't tall. Yeah. Get the sign in. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, so anyway, she... Are they doing a collection pretty soon? Yeah, they're doing a public collection. On the 22nd. We can jump in on that. On the 22nd of March? Yeah. I yeah, think we, we can get in on that. We've got I'm pretty sure that's what I used to. Yeah, we can take them down anytime. Right. The public one you have to pay. I don't know if we, if we, pay, we went on the public one time. There was a whole line. We didn't, we didn't do that I see. Okay, anyway. Uh, now we know we you get that notice to me? Just, uh, <coughs> the tire notice? Certainly the tire notice. There we go. Uh, a message from Melissa Howell, who used to be Melissa Branham. And she also was Melissa Howell not very long ago about an upcoming Board of Health meeting. And there's also, excuse me, an upcoming, oh yeah, Susan Martin's reminding us of the um, DAC meeting, which I will be attending on the 20th of this month. Uh, Legal Women Voters Newsletter, you voted in March of. A message from the Green County Commissioners about the 2018 Electric Aggregation Program, uh, which is, uh, which was uh, <coughs> voted on, I think, last November, and everyone is eligible to participate in it unless they live in Yellow Springs, because it's only for the unincorporated areas of the county um, and being served by uh, Dayton Power Light, actually. So, you <laughs> will get a uh, reduced rate on your electric. Shell? Yeah. Or, yeah. You. Don't turn the lights on there. Don't, don't, spend <laughs> all, don't spend that all in one place. Uh, no, notification from Woodland uh, Cemetery regarding a upcoming program that's going to happen on Saturday, March 24th. And Mr. Crockett has expressed interest in going to that. Um, let's see, a uh, note from uh, Brad Rui about a payment that's already been made, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, a generic uh, care works about our workman comp stuff. Uh, a message back and forth from Richard and I about getting the new, uh, um, uh, the new zoning amendments through a public hearing. I imagine you'll touch on that in your extensive report to follow, so we'll wait for that. Uh, some messages from Pontum uh, about some information they needed to get their work started. Um, oh, a message from MDRPC reminding us about the spring dinner on the 12th of, uh, 12th of uh, April. And a message uh, about the Planning Commission's recent uh, meeting where they elected uh, ex uh, office executive officers for 2018-19. And look, who's second? Who the second? Folks? Your Jesus. name. Look, I'm right there. And you know what this that is? This is the Miami Valley Regional Plan. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you know what that gets us? That gets us to have a picture in a couple of years <laughs> of the, what will be the president at the time. So we're looking forward to that. <laughs> An 8x10 yeah. glossy photo <laughs> of the new president. Um, more MVRP system. A Destination Dayton magazine, which is very interesting. And some more MVRPC stuff. And the MVRPC budget for the year. I feel like I'm missing stuff. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got a couple of things. I had a couple of things of my own. Or not my own, but just things that they came in. Oh, yeah. We had a request this afternoon for uh, two, well, there are, there are going to be two new additions to the Memorial Scattering Garden. Uh, they, are, they will be official additions. But they will be short of actual ashes. Uh, they, the, the people wanted to have um, this family 
permanently memorialized in a you know in a cemetery somewhere where you know, their information can be stored and you know be researched for residents or for relatives and things in the future. But they have been previously scattered somewhere else. So they're going to just use the money. Mm -hmm. And they're going to pay the full amount for each for each family member. Um, and I said, what the heck? So each Who will never know. <laughs> Uh, just more general interest, anyone who has their ashes scattered, their name goes up on the memorial? Their name's on the memorial, on the monument, yes. And is it and there possible is, that someone who has recently had their ashes scattered, the name isn't yet up on the memorial? Yes, it is possible. Because someone asked me about that. Yes, it isn't that instantaneous? It will be as soon they, I think they started etching them and how soon they get to the world of this. Yeah, and I've spoken to at least we're only a short one, right? Are we? Yeah, the, the last one. Well, a recent widow asked me what was going on. Well, a recent widow asked me what was going on also. Probably the same one. But she was out of the state. Maybe she came back. Anyway, I can't something. remember the name, but I gave I give all the info. Larry, did he ever send you a. Mm -hmm. okay. No, they never, <coughs> sent, me, never <coughs> sent me a draft, or whatever you call it. Uh, there, there was one more thing in there, and I can just tell you what it was. It was a, um, a, a folder that had the that had the engineer in it, engineering firm in it, that the 343 connector group is considering uh, hiring on a small basis because they don't have a lot of money to study the feasibility of uh, proposed routes, which is kind of the that hold up because there's only a partial proposed route. <laughs> there's a proposed route that goes from uh, John Bryan Park, the Orton parking lot. The Orton parking lot. In Bryan Park. In to Bryan Park. To, to Clifton. To Clifton. Through the mountain bike trails. Already there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's the getting from the Orton Trail, or I should say, Swimming Pool Road, or Brian Park, John Brian Park Road, Three Seventy, to um, to somewhere in Yellow Springs. So they're going to have a future meeting with Krista McGaw and uh, Nick Budis about potential paved trail routes. Mm -hmm. right. Anyway, <laughs> that's that was. So, is there anything else that I missed or <coughs> came in late? It's not something I'm aware of. We will go to uh, Chief Alton and. Where's those two handouts I gave you? They're right here. Thank you. Yeah, my son has nothing but words of praise for you. Oh, well, he yeah. <laughs> With the amount of money I've been paying, Justin. I mean, uh, <laughs> well, that's good to hear. We went to Pittsburgh yesterday as a day trip, uh -huh. and uh, so I talked to him quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was saying that you're doing a great job. Huh. Yeah. Compared to Pittsburgh, or <laughs> no, 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 just uh, juggling, uh, having a very professional department with very happy people. I mean, it's hard well, to, uh, to balance that act. Uh, Thank you, Justin. Yeah. Well, let's we'll start off with a point somebody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're Sorry. Here. Well, we're here. <clears throat> um, yes, you have before you resol uh, okay. Resolution 2018-10, mm -hmm. volunteer appointment, appointment of volunteer, uh, Yellow Springs resident, Paloma Wiggins. Oh. And it basically reads, whereas the continuing need to maintain proper staffing <laughs> within the fire department, mm -hmm. and uh, whereas Paloma Wiggins has completed all necessary applications, background checks, and dues, uh, to be appointed as a volunteer, and whereas Chief Allman has recommended that appointment, and whereas funds are available for the purpose of training and equipping volunteer personnel, within the fire department's operating budget. Therefore, be it resolved that the above candidate shall be appointed to a volunteer position with the fire rescue department effective to March 5, 18. Do I have a, a motion to approve that, to approve that resolution? So moved. 
Charles for the second. Thanks. Mr. Kraft, the second. Any further discussion? Is uh, Ms. Wiggins uh, trained in no. any way, shape, or form? No, but she has a college degree from State College. There you go. Mm -hmm. She's okay in my book then. And a lot of interest and excitement according to Julia. Mm -hmm. okay. well, she was very active in the community when she was in high school. Mm -hmm. here. Yeah, she organized the, the Simply Women 5K. And so she's Paloma, who I know Paloma very well, but her last name was. That's so I think so. Her mom was Karen Curtis. With a different name. <laughs> okay, and maybe I'm thinking of another Paloma. But she's come back to town. That's she's come back. <laughs> she's come back from Smith. Well, anyway, um, having no further discussion, may we vote, please? Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we've also had 23 EMS calls and nine fire calls since the last meeting. A lower number than before. Yeah, no kidding. Well, nice and nice. I've <coughs> done three fire safety inspections and issued 19 permits. 19. Yeah, there'll be a check coming for $725. Uh, the Pesky State Fire Marshal has gone and updated the fire code, the 2017 edition, which doesn't take effect until April 1st. But, so the law says we all, all us inspectors have to go get updated. So Dan and I will be going next Wednesday to the fire academy and Nate and Joe go uh, March 29th down to Miami University. And, uh, we got Six and a half hours mm -hmm. require continuing education time. Mm -hmm. Can't learn about the music. Okay. Um, and then also next week, Dan and I are going into Cincinnati uh, for a community paramedicine panel that's uh, put on by the University of Cincinnati. Community paramedicine is the uh, hot new uh, thing in pre hospital care. Basically, paramedics going out and doing follow up care. With Patients. Hmm. It's a big thing. Insurance companies push and it helps keep costs down on health and hospital systems. There have been a lot of um, really amazing pilot programs across the country, um, <coughs> <coughs> particularly in Houston, Texas, where uh, paramedics get a list of people who have been discharged from the hospital recently and go and visit them, make sure they're complying with their medications and that type of thing. Would they be on our clock or? Who's clock? That's what we've got to figure out. That's, that, that's why we're going to the same. Yeah. I mean, I'm, a, I'm hoping we'll get all the answers because the panel has 21 people on it. Oh, so between all those people, someone. Now, is these the are patients who were transported to the hospital? They, there are a lot of different ways to do it. A lot of places, um, it would, in the early thoughts we've had, we'd probably partner with one of the two hospital systems in the area. Probably the one that has a doctor's office. And then you do follow-up care with certain patients, certain types of patients, um, who are more prone to readmission to the hospital. Under Medicare, Medicaid rules, reimbursement rules, if the hospital discharges a patient and they return to the hospital for the same problem within 30 days, the hospital doesn't get reimbursed for that. Or doesn't get reimbursed for that. Um, so as an incentive for health wellness, insurance and Medicare rules were working faster than reality. And there's really no system in place to do that. Um, so that's one of the ideas that community paramedicine has, plus doing wellness checks and, and that type of thing, uh, immunizations. Um, and it wasn't legal in Ohio until recently. Like the governor signed something last year into effect, allowing us to do limited kind of hospital and kind of scope mm -hmm. things. Um, and there's some pilot programs here. I think Westerville does one, and um, one of the suburbs of Cincinnati does one as well. So. This is, this is a huge shift, would be a huge shift. Yes, definitely would be. Um, but the efficacy in the, in the studies has been very strong um, on helping to keep patients from having to be readmitted. Um, if I may, just a comment. The hospitals already do that. I mean, in a lot of, if you've been in the right. hospital, and once you're discharged, a nurse will call the right. house. Yeah. More and than this one, is, like, they'll keep, and they'll keep calling until you get right. back to them. And some systems actually send a nurse out in the field. Um, it's cheaper to do that care with a paramedic versus a nurse. And it costs, bottom line, obviously, for a lot of things. 
Well, who decided that it, now it's going to add yet another burden on the fire EMS departments? There are positives and negatives mm -hmm. to it. Um, but it, you know, it keeps your staff busy. So that's one thing. And then it would be an opt-in thing. Oh, yeah. It's not a mandatory. It's definitely not a mandatory. Oh, okay. So, but if, if they're off visiting somebody, they're not here to go on a run. I mean, those are things we'd have to look at in terms of how do you do that. I mean, you know, do they leave a patient that they're going to follow up on? Does the patient come to our station for the follow up? We're not going to see them in the EMS room, then we'll have a window. So we'll do <laughs> but we'll have a sink. So, so there's a lot of things. It should be an interesting thing to, to find out, to discover. All right, well, we'll be looking for a full report. I want to digest the 21 <laughs> panel, I'll let you know. Um, and then last, I mean, last but not least, until. Uh, last. Yeah. <laughs> um, budget and staffing, you know, it's that time of year again. Uh, at the last meeting that I wasn't at, I gave you a <laughs> memo stating uh, what our problems were and then had to go deal with a deep, uh, deep fried Oreo uh, fire in Cedarville Township. <laughs> the notes uh, from the dispatcher were fantastic. It said, caller says, frying Oreos, it's caught on fire, sprayed with water. Spread fire. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what you don't do. <laughs> but luckily, she uh, also had a fire extinguisher. <coughs> Kept her house from burning down. Let's completely. get to the priority budget items before we get to the. Okay, so uh, you got the money. You guys already know the money estimates from coming in. Uh, so some priority budget items for this coming year, for this current year that we're in. Um, SCBA face pieces. These are the masks that the firefighters wear. How many? Uh, five. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, much cheaper than I thought. Take out the quarter million. That's total amount for five of them. Yes, total for five. Yeah, not for per. Um, our goal is to do what most of the fire departments in the area do, and right now, each SCBA unit has a mask attached to it. The guys wear those, um, but it also allows for contamination. Mm -hmm. um, most departments have gone to a system where each firefighter has their own mask assigned to them as part of their equipment. Anyway, the masks themselves are. Um, so this would allow us to start moving that and we'd buy another five next year. We can take the ones we already have, we have 18 currently, mm -hmm. and then we'll start, as we add these additional masks, we'll start spreading them out and distributing the vendors. Um, keeping a couple on each truck in case someone forgets that mask or something. Cedarville does it, uh, Zia Township does it, and very successful. The masks you have now, are they these? Or are yeah, they it's the exact same model. You have 18 of those? Yeah, because we have 18 SCBAs. Is this that you're sharing them with? Right, we're yeah. sharing them currently. You don't have 18 firefighters. We actually have 24 firefighters. Believe it or not. How much they don't show up is another issue. <laughs> okay. Uh, when you go through the roster, that's... <laughs> yeah. uh, are the fire hoses out of, out of date or out of compliance or something? The fire hose has holes in it. So we need to replace them. Just one at the end, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, wish. One at each end. Two holes. This is actually an anticipation. Um, we have to test the supply line this year, and we're most of it is you know, we bought. It was all bought when I came on. It's been sitting on the truck so it's probably sprung all. So we'll see. We may not have to spend it if, we, if we're lucky. But, yeah. Okay. Um, all right. We we got, got, uh, eight, but it's not one of those things where it times out. No, fire okay. hose at this point, the NFPA has not put. Um, I'm sure that's on its way. Don't hold your breath on that one. I mean, hold your breath. Mm -hmm. um, grant match and upgrade for the power cot, um, where our grant request through the safety grant from BWC is in review next week, I think, for now. Um, according to the BWC guys, it's more than likely we're going to get this grant to replace the power cot. So that's our portion of it uh, the match and then the mounting hardware because that's not included in the grant. Well, Obviously, that would be a priority if we got the grant and right. whatever year it would be that it showed up. Yeah, I don't know how what the lead time or the night time would be on that, but it would be this year okay. if if we get the grant. They award the money. The money's reimbursed. I should know. I think the power the safety grants up front. Um, and you got you you've gotten 18 cylinders. You say? Oh, we've got actually more than that. Mm -hmm. But the cylinders do time out. That's why we want to start a replacing program now. Uh, we've got about three or four years left before we have to replace the bulk of our cylinders. So we'll start with two. Seems like we just bought those. Yep. Uh, uh, Six to nine hundred bucks for uh, three sets of turnout gear. For who? 
Uh, it's just having a money budget if you guys have to start a place because turn out your time's out after 10 years. And then, mm -hmm. uh, we've got three, set, three sets. Three sets. Three sets. That's on a state contract. Uh, fire station technology. I put this in because I'm not sure if this is coming out of our budget or out of the fire station levy or partial what. So I just talked through this. Either way, it's not going to be till 19 anyway. So right. it really won't come out of this budget. True. Uh, it's going to be relatively towards the end of the project. And hopefully, if there's. We, we can't spend it out of that if we got that. If we got that, okay. That's, I put it in here just because. This is an excellent day's waiting on a final quote because he found that he could probably get everything cheaper through uh, NBRPC. But, uh, <coughs> and and the, uh, the guys out there at the Morgan School. Yeah, I know. Mabeka. 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 Oh, yeah. He's putting on a quote back from the guy uh, for. Um, and that includes the servers, the monitors, the mm -hmm. phone system, all the stuff that mm -hmm. makes the fire station tick. Okay. Well, uh, except the stuff that you and he talked about, except not including the, the cameras, because so that was included in the construction cost. I can't remember. Okay. And then, so those are the priority budget, budget items, and then of course, just the normal stuff that we right. go through every year, and hopefully no more excessive maintenance costs. Um, and the staff. Okay, staff. Staff. Um, additional staff. Or additional. This is additional funding. Right. Last year we spent uh, uh, about three hundred eight thousand dollars on our staffing costs uh, for this, the paid staff. <coughs> Excuse me, including pension costs and, and that type of thing. So I gave you guys a report. I think it was the end of last year. So you. I can get your company if you don't know. Alex put together a, a staffing study. He surveyed area departments. Well, that was just last month. Yeah, yeah that was. Okay. <laughs> Everything blends together after mm -hmm. a while. Um, he looked at uh, different departments and compared and contrasted and then looked at what we're currently going through, um, which is not good. And uh, came up with several recommendations. We've discussed it, looked at it, and came up with the model that we think is the best to help alleviate the problems that we're having. Currently, of course, the problem is, well, we've had to page out for additional personnel to cover shifts for the last five minutes. Mm -hmm. um, tonight, Evans is the one that's I'm the shift commander, so I have to fill that slot with him um, to make an ambulance crew. We had the same problem last night, Friday night, Thursday night. This was the this was the preferred scenario option as opposed to it, it's not the least expensive but it's the Correct. one that's preferred. It is not the least, <laughs> the least expensive of the two. There were two options that we had that could address the immediate issue, mm -hmm. which is lack of staff, lack of volunteer staff. Uh, this one comes in at eighty four. The other one's about 50, mm -hmm. 50, 54, I think. Uh, the other option, the cheaper option, was utilizing part time staff. Hiring, we'd have to hire additional part time staff. Uh, and have them work 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. pretty much every night mm -hmm. throughout the year to guarantee that one person that we always had a crew and mm -hmm. then all you need is just one EMT. Um, the downsides to that are mainly logistical. It's a scheduling issue, getting people to commit to work only a 12-hour shift uh, overnight. Um, and there's a lot of um, turnover mm -hmm. in part cheaper because there's no pension costs, obviously, no insurance costs, but we're repaying after being free guys. Um, and then there's no guarantee you're going to get paramedics to come work for you, yeah. which is really what we want. Right. Uh, with the model that Alex came up with, taking our three current hourly full-time guys, Joe, Jason, and Nate, from their current daytime models to a 24, standard four, 24 on 48 off rotation with what's called a Kelly day. The Kelly Day is something that's designed to keep our overtime costs down. Mm -hmm. So the Kelly Day comes in, I think it's every seventh shift. They're off. And that helps keep, because overtime is figured for these guys in a 21-day um, period mm -hmm. versus an 80-hour work week. Mm -hmm. um, so that definitely helps us keep the time down. Um, and it's legal. It's a standard mm -hmm. situation. Um, 
the benefits for us then are you've got guys who they can plan their schedule for the rest of eternity because they're always on 24 hours and off for 48. Uh, they're all paramedics. They're all capable of functioning as supervisors. They've all been here at least five years. Uh, and Nate is a supervisor already. Um, so you would or would not have five people on how many shifts? Five people at a time on how many? Well, we'd have, there would be, in terms of paid people, these guys would be on 24 hours. Uh, they'd be on a 24 hour shift. Um, so there'd always be one of these people here. Yep. And then during the daytime, weekdays, and then I would still be here, obviously. <laughs> and who else? And one part time person. So you're going to go from five full time, roughly, during the day to three? We're actually typically on four because Jason and Joe work alternate shifts. And but Nate's if you're all and Nate's here forty hours a week right. with anything. So so we go from we actually we'd stay at four because you'd have Danny and I during the daytime, uh -huh. a part timer, and then whichever guy is on his, his rotation. Mm -hmm. um, Are they willing to make this shift? Or would they be? So far? When we've had discussions about it, yes. Um, most guys who work at 2448 like it because you have two days off. And then when you get your Kelly, you end up with a five day stretch. Um, and then you're not burning vacation time because that's you know, five days off. It's, you know, um, busier departments, like significantly busier departments, are looking at transitioning away from this because you know, if you're going on 12 calls a night, 24 hours, you know, becomes a really long shift. Mm -hmm. it's, it can be dangerous, but we're certainly <laughs> nowhere near that. Um, some of the changes I would include, you know, I mean, currently all three get health insurance mm -hmm. through us and dental. Um, it would add, it would place Joe and Jason into the pension program, but we've calculated, but now it's calculated mm -hmm. those costs in there. Um, it would help us too, we think, in the future, somewhat here, but once we're in a new facility, I think it would make volunteers more apt to want to spend the night in the firehouse if there's someone else here. Um, and someone who can, you know, if need be, train them, keep the company, or just, you know, whatever, cook dinner, in Jason's case. Um, but it would give us that 24-7 staffing that we're currently, we can't assure at the moment. Plus, they work holidays. So we don't have this crisis that we run into every holiday. Mm -hmm. right? Only one guy wants to volunteer that night. Mm -hmm. And then Amy Denny are, you know, start covering that shit up. Um, but, but, so when the numbers are there in the chart, it's an $84,417 difference in what we're paying right now. So theoretically, if we and our plan is to maintain our, with some tweaking downward, maintain our expenditures in line with what we did last year, 100 and 109,000 in EMS and I think 520 in fire. Um, looking at the rollovers and everything, based on the year, first of the year, so it'd be less. We had $386,247 unappropriated. That's Certainly it's going to be reduced now because we're, what, three months in? Well, two months, two and a half months in. That's about, but not, that's about what everybody agrees to, okay. right? Sure. <laughs> well, we agree. <laughs> and um, we're, Smiles and eyes. Yeah. I, I, <coughs> you know, we have to take the leap of faith that that Alex and you and you know that, that this is the best option to go go forward. And you know, I will I will certainly entertain a motion to, to put this into effect tomorrow for a period of no more than a year to as a trial to see how it benefits if it's you know if it's producing the desired results, and if not, maybe we could modify it to the to another method or something else. But as opposed to a, a permanent, uh, and and it's you know certainly no no question that the eighty four is going to you know is going to accrue every year after year after year, and we'll have to see you know how that. You right, know, how that affects the long-term stuff. And of course, we have no idea 
how much more or less this new firehouse is going to run us right. to maintain. And so we'll have to see that. Yeah. And we won't know that at the end of next year very well. I mean, we'll have maybe a rough idea. Right. Uh, but no. I would Great. certainly want to perhaps take the next two weeks and meet with some fire chiefs who utilize the staffing to make sure there's nothing we've missed. Mm -hmm. uh, or even with the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association. <coughs> um, you know, smaller departments who've had to transition to this. Uh, as in a township could be a good example. Um, where they, they only have... They have chan done this. Yes. Yeah. The township made their transition to full-time staffing three years ago, maybe? Two or three years ago, where they have a similar model. They have three full-time guys, one on every 24. Um, and then they, they don't have volunteers. The rest of their staff is all part-time. Um, we would not get rid of our volunteers. This is designed to supplement the volunteers. Millbrook is the same thing. They've got three or four full-time guys, part-timers, and volunteers. They would get more similar to us. Uh, Brookville is another example. So I would want to get with those chiefs, make sure that we're not missing, that there's not some crazy ingredient that we've missed. I'm also waiting on some information from Ms. Hayden prior to her departure. Um, We'd have to look at how we uh, how we phrase certain things. Once there's, I, I think we're exempt from it, but I'm not sure, so I'd have to double check this. But there's the issue of unionization, collective bargaining. Um, but I've heard in the past, so this is why I want to verify with her, is that uh, in a small township like us, that's not is it term home rule, or, mm -hmm. they have to have five collective bar uh, bargaining. But I'm not sure. So. And then I don't know where Nate would fall into that because he's he also still has administrative responsibilities. So I don't know if he could be in that. So I mean, there's there's a few other things to look at prior to mm -hmm. launching this. Obviously, and certainly. Um, but I think this gives us the best possibility. Okay. Well, I would be in favor of uh, uh, you know of, of moving the process along and you know. What's the difference between waiting for having a motion tonight or saying, very interested, you've just suggested there are some things that ought to be checked on, mm -hmm. and waiting mm -hmm. for that additional information? Well, as, as long as we give him an affirmation to, to begin that process, mm -hmm. that's fine. You know, I, I don't <coughs> want to make it sound like, you know, I'm really positively great. inclined, but but uh, the phrase due diligence looms, and although we got the study, this is the first time we've had much discussion. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, again, are you, are you agreeing that he should pursue the due diligence part of it? I am. Okay. I don't know about it. Um, well, I'm inclined to do whatever you want to do. Yeah, I, mean, I just think that those words. in our interest, <laughs> in the interest of the township, mm -hmm. would be okay. I'll research it further to make sure that we're on so, the right And there are, you know, like I said, the, the part time is an option. There's another option we can look at with part timers, which is putting them on a 24 hour shift. Mm -hmm. One guy every you work at once every six shifts. But, but some of the problems I've heard with that, I think, are, are retention. Because our pay doesn't match, which it's not going to because we're a small township. But right. guys, you know, flee smaller places. You get your training, mm -hmm. right. and off you go to Washington Township, which mm -hmm. is starting two dollars and more than we are. Mm -hmm. um, the career guys are more apt to stay because well, they're getting more money. They've got a better job. It's a real job. They're in a pension, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I mean, it would definitely also. I would have to sit down. Nate is completely on board. I've discussed it with Joe and Jason, but I, you know, I'd have to have a more serious discussion with the two of them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jason, for instance, is you know, completing nursing school, mm -hmm. so I'd want him to, you know, realize, okay, at the end of this, if we do this, if you get into it now, you've got a pension. Mm -hmm. That's going to affect your future, you know, future plans, or at least it should. I mean, it should be a factor for him. So, would he want that job, or you know? So, I mean, there's internal stuff too. We, we need to. But I mean, everyone was on board theoretically when it was just 
a theory <laughs> before coming to you guys. So okay, well, I, so yeah, if I can take the next two weeks, that would be one. I think you should, you know, start to move on this. Yeah, start, start to get the solution in place. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm certainly not in any way, you know, and I think hopefully you guys know this, but oh, so they know it too. Mm -hmm. Not advocating in any way getting changing our volunteer model. You know, we still want volunteers. We still need volunteers, and the ones we have are doing a stellar job. We just if I could clone them all, mm -hmm. that would be marvelous. Yeah. In in your talking to uh, departments that have started to do this, I'd be curious what their those that have volunteers what their experience is. You you suggested that maybe this would make it more likely that volunteers would want to commit to the union. Yeah, uh, <laughs> interested to yeah. see if that's confirmed. Yeah, that, I mean, so I mean, I plan, I'm trying to get with Zena Township's administrator because I think he's probably maybe Deputy Chief Beagle because those two, I think, were most intimately involved with this. And Chief Nyhart in, in Delbrook. And, and Is somebody cooking something? That might probably be downstairs. Too hot. Doesn't sound like it's burning, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, burning so, in the fire department? I, I just have one, one quick question. Okay. So the way it stands right now, the way. Um, folks are paid, it's basically, you know, it's divided in between both funds. Yeah. So would there maybe be a little bit of <laughs> tweaking in we, that? I possibly? think we would have to sit and look at that and see. Especially if there's a little more money in EMS <coughs> than there is Excuse me. What, and, yeah, and what fire. Works. Definitely. So, so yeah, there's, there's much, not much, but there's still stuff to be done. So. Okay. But I do appreciate this. You're, you're in agreement? Yes, I am. Don, you're in agreement? And as a in principle, as a probable support, with pending more information. Okay. That's Is that waffly enough? That's waffly <laughs> just one. Okay, so there's your directive. Go stamp this with my net stamp. I'm, waffle. <laughs> waffle stamp. I'm going to uh, uh, put off the conference quiz till maybe next. Meeting. Oh, okay. Just because you spent way too much. Of <laughs> How's this? The conference you went to is a different a conference you went to different than the one we went to. No, it's the one we went to, and we're we're going to make sure that he's complying with everything that we learned that he's okay. complying to it and all that good stuff. All right, uh, new fire progress report is very brief, not nutty. <laughs> uh, we're still waiting for the permit from Green County. Uh, still waiting for the permit from Green County. Still waiting for the permit from the county. Yeah. Yeah. Is so, this a building permit? Yeah. They have to do, they have to do a, a total review of the, of, of the, uh, architect, or the, yeah, the architect's work before they obviously issue the permit, so that's what they're in the middle of now. Or hopefully ending now. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Hurry up. And the thing is that uh, it's really a necessary function to make sure that we get what we think we're getting. All right, well, hopefully we get it. Hope we'll get it soon. <laughs> cemetery, Mr. Cemetery, I've already given you uh, just a tip. I didn't mean, add much. Right. Well, add what you can. I'm going to try to put some gravel on that last straw if it doesn't have any gravel. With the file I have with it. Uh -huh. just, okay. Well, that's good. And then hopefully just don't put it out of the garage. Oh, uh, I put one out there for a reason. I needed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the last one? The one little grassy, gravelly, whatever they used to be dry. Down there where? The old cemetery? Red Forest. Yeah, old. Well, medium old. Yeah. Not old old. Section E. Right. E. E. And then hopefully I can get in there and work in the next couple of weeks. Weather permits. I hope so. Um, did you is a uh, anything from Cedar View or did they have something? They sent Cedar View. Is that what they call they it? Roger. Yeah, he sent me. He sent it. We got we got a check for the first quarter installment. Okay. He Checks called, cut. He called and asked me if it did. I said I'll ask the Tell him. Checks in the mail. Tell him the mail. Checks in the mail. Did you have any personnel issues you wanted to raise? Not yet. Okay. Let's check it. Maybe next round. 
before the grass gets too long. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk about that. No, I think that's a all I have. Anything for Mr. Bocanara regarding cemeteries? Or you know, move to the road report. Uh, I took care of that tree this morning on my birthday. Mm -hmm. I left over the weekend because it's a pretty big job. But it was taken care of this morning. You I think you can find it. a piece of guardrail to match that one? I have a piece of guardrail. I'd like to match that one. Well, it's not there. I was on the Dallas Park one. Why am I down now? Yeah, big, big. Um, and sometime I need to try to get that tile in. Potholes popped up in the glass. Yeah. Yes, Trusty Hollister and I took a pro tour. Don't be jealous. You've had plenty. <laughs> uh, everything actually looked very good. Everything's uh, fair, pretty fair shape, except I've got some holes that have popped up since the yeah. last patching. Little tiny. Well, little tiny can be yeah, like they that get today. Yeah, they get this yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> Get heavy rain, it doesn't take any time. Mm. Did you fill the Jacoby Road once? Um, no, our neighbors did down to the side. They mm. called and told me to take care of that. That's nice. Huh? It was. Mm -hmm. I mean, at, let me make a comment as a newbie. I'm impressed at how the neighboring townships help each other. It works. It's pretty neat. It works. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else, Mr. Roadman? Um, can we talk about that fire lock now? In the Certainly. Uh, I think we're going to get rid of the rest of the asphalt tomorrow or Wednesday. Mm -hmm. and I should hopefully get that wrapped up this week where I can put the trails for Yeah. Well, the okay. weather's cooperated up. They don't have to try to get, you know, that's a good. So I should have a clean up for you this week. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. So the sidewalk will be gone for one block of Zinni Avenue. How long? 190 feet till whenever they can make it. Your approach for it out there. So okay. I, I put some caution tape at each end, but mm -hmm. I didn't take the whole thing off. But I put some cones out there, so I added to the color scheme and some yellow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll move to the fiscal officer. Mm -hmm. Were you guys going to talk about the the, the Beth Richmond thing to the road guy? I thought we already did. We did? He said, he, he said he fixed it. I took care of it. Oh, he did. Everything drained. Everything drained out. Well, it's just a plug holder. You know, people maybe break the leaves out of the ditch in the winter time. Mm -hmm. Or fall. Yeah, it's okay, though. Everything drained it. I think it was. Right. Problem solved. Yep, good. Okay, yeah. I have. Um, this is her. Oh, my last, last, hopefully this last we amendment of temporary appropriations because hopefully tonight we're going to adopt our permanent appropriations. I don't have to do this anymore. Anyway, 2018-09, amendment of temporary appropriations, whereas it is an ongoing process to determine appropriations for fiscal year 2018, and whereas it is required to submit all appropriation changes made to the 2018 budget to the county auditor, now, therefore, the trustees authorize the following changes to the temporary appropriations and instruct the fiscal officer to submit them to the county auditor, and they're all in the fire fund. I had to increase the telephone um, appropriation by $30. <laughs> Electricity by $50, and um, the machinery, equipment, and furniture appropriation was increased at, um, was zero, and we had put $1,500 in there to pay for, was it ink? Yes. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Uh, what's the number? I'm sorry. 2018-09. I uh, entertain a motion to adopt resolutions 2018-09. I will make that motion. Mr. Cox seconds. Mr. Oster seconds. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Anyone may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. I guess we need an appropriation to adopt the permanent appropriations. Right behind that. Mm -hmm. You need a resolution, I mean, you mean? Yeah. Do you have a number? It, sure, it'll be 11. Okay. Mm -hmm. did, did you have to change that one? 
uh, general to put the, some money in that building of equipment and furniture? It doesn't matter. I just wondered if you did. No, no, I didn't. I mean, I was just waiting for the, the, the discussion to make any changes that we mm -hmm. want to make to the information that I gave you all previously. Okay. No, so that was my only yeah, and, and discussion about that. Like I said, you wanted to put, what was it, 18? Well, we, we don't have that much, but like 15. 15 in um, machinery, equipment, and furniture? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do we have that much? Yeah. We do. Is there, was there any other changes that anybody had that they wanted to make that I gave you all? I don't. I'm not sure which copy of the budget we're operating from. One to well, it was, it, it's this. It's okay. the appropriation status. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, Fine. And to, um, to ease your so mind, Don, I mean, you know, it, since this is kind of your first go around on this, is that the, these numbers aren't, you know, they can be changed. I, I mean, understand that. You know, we sometimes have to add just, more, and sometimes we don't use half or, of it, stuff like that. So Since it was something you'd given me earlier, not tonight, I wanted to make sure I was looking at the right stuff. Right, yeah, I know. Same, same stuff, so. So, so that would, that's other than that, and you know, I think Colin, you didn't have any major changes you wanted me to deal with, right? Negative. Okay. Did you say nine? I'm sorry. No, it would it would be um, eleven. Eleven. Yeah. Okay. So I'll um, look for a motion to uh, adopt resolution 2018-11, uh, adoption of permanent appropriations. Mm -hmm. So move. Mr. Allison moves. I'll second that. Second, any further discussion regarding that adoption? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Anything further? No. Zone Inspector? Okay. Um, two things. Last fall, the, the, the Zoning Commission um, put together a package of amendments to the zoning code, to the text of the code, and had went through their process in public hearing and made the recommendation to the trustees to adopt those. Um, for whatever reason, the trustees did not act on that, and the trustees, by law, have to act on it within 30 days of receiving it. So we have to start the process all over again, according to Stephanie. So I just scheduled a public hearing with the Zoning Commission at their next regular meeting, which is the 20th of this month. And Unless something very strange happens, they will simply <laughs> recommend again that the same set of, of changes identical that you had before um, be recommended again, and that bear in mind that you have 30 days to act on those. Um, if you choose not to act on them, then you better let the Zoning Commission know why it is you're, you're not interested in their recommendations. Because they don't, they don't get to the point of making recommendations very often, so they need the encouragement. <laughs> okay. Well, we, okay. So we, that, had no, we had no explanation of why they, why they weren't adopted expeditiously <laughs> yeah. last year, but rest assured they will. Yeah, they and, will and, and I, I've talked with you, and, and you know, and so. I think everything will be just fine, but that, that's the situation. Okay. Um, Anything else going on? Yeah, the other, the, basically the other significant thing going on, I've had one meeting with, with Community Solutions about Agraria and have another one scheduled um, about a week from now. Um, they're learning about zoning, they're learning about building codes, they're learning about what they can do as a nonprofit and what they can't. And, and I'd say that's essentially, if that learning is, is the key word. But this next meeting, uh, the last meeting I went to was primarily me talking about zoning, but also giving them some, some background <laughs> information having to do with other nonprofits and how things work. This meeting includes Al Kuzma because Al is having difficulties understanding as a from the building department, well, what is this <laughs> operation? Is this, a, is this a business? Is this a farm? Is this a what? And so um, we're, we're again going to, to get together and, and, and try to make sure everybody understands what can happen. 
And it occurred to me as this process goes on that um, it may be time for a fire inspection out there too. Not that, I mean, somehow we just lost the, the key player, but um, because they are they are using the barn for activities that aren't agricultural, and you know the barn was never designed to you know to, to house large groups of people. In term, I don't know what the safety concerns would be for that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, but, I, but maybe the, the Al will point that out to them because he, he he's usually aware of those those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's the, the the new and different thing that's that's in process right now. Mm -hmm. On the regular zoning front, I don't have anything interesting. We're not having a zoning inspectors meeting with regional planning because the because of the transfer administration down there, so yeah. things are on hold. Yeah, um, that's going to be interesting. Uh, although, there is a meeting scheduled. What's the turnover? What? Ken LeBlanc is, is, is leaving, retiring from regional planning, and will be replaced by someone. I don't, I don't have my ear to the ground on that. I just know that that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're, they are having two workshops on how to use the, the new improved GIS system, which I found one improvement, but boy is it hard to use for those of us who are familiar with the old one. Oh, yes. So I'm hoping that this, this, this training session will, will shed some light on it or, or convince them that, that they haven't made improvements. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, it, it always takes a while yeah. for the new product, but um, find out a little bit more about that in the coming weeks. Okay, thank you very much. Standing committee reports will be next meeting. New business for the evening is the adoption of another resolution. We are just on the right Yes, that'll be, that'll be number 12 then. Oh, yeah, okay. Because yeah, it said 09, it? so we... Right, right, but... So you we know, used the 09. That 09, yeah, I didn't change it because I wasn't even sure you were going to adopt it, so... Okay. So you say 12? Okay. Yes, please. Uh, this is the one I was searching for everywhere last meeting and found it on Margaret's desk. You did? Yeah, I did. Uh, along with the certification requirement from the engineer's department, um, the road department engineer's office, about the, the, the road certification, yeah. But we went ahead and signed that. Yeah, that I thought that, yeah, I had that. I had a, I had a sticky on the front of it. Yeah, on meeting. your desk, yeah, on, for the meeting. I was really anxious to get out of town. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is resolution 2017-12. Basically reads at a regularly scheduled meeting of the Miami Township Board of Trustees held. Well, we're going to change that. <laughs> we tonight. Oh, that. Held tonight. Yeah. I, 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 I changed it, but I didn't reprint it. I'm sorry. At Township Hall, Mr. Move, Mr. Second to follow resolution, whereas June 30th, 2015, Attorney General of the State of Ohio issued opinion number 2015 21, and whereas this opinion established a procedure wherein a Township Board of Trustees may authorize the reimbursement to qualified employees for their. Uh, out-of-pocket expenses for Medicare Part B premiums, and whereas to qualify for these reimbursements, the employee must reach, reach the, meet the following criteria. One, the township must provide group uh, insurance coverage for all employees of the township, and two, the township has not set a maximum amount for reimbursements uh, of any part of their group plan, and the employee seeking reimbursement must opt out of the group's township group health plan. Therefore, it be resolved that any employee of Miami Township that meets aforementioned qualifications will be considered eligible for reimbursement of Part B Medicare premiums from the date of issuance of AG Opinion 2015-21. Uh, uh, is there a motion to adopt Resolution 2017-2018? I've been working on that since 2017-12. I will make that motion. Mr. Crockett moves. Se second. Mr. Hollister seconds. Any further discussion regarding adoption? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. And I think we did kind of agree, and we know about Don's being paid separately, but in, this would be between Mark and I, agree to a, let's do it on a yearly basis. Doesn't really matter when, but let's just do it once a year. Mm -hmm. So, just... Oh, you mean the reimbursement? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's a relatively small amount, and, and Margaret doesn't need another check, or a couple of checks every mm -hmm. single month. <laughs> wow. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I'll give this back, but just to remind us, but I'll make a, I, I'll make a clean copy. Yeah. Okay.
Uh, any additional new business this evening? Here, not any old business to be taken care of this evening? That was kind of old business because we had it last time. We just couldn't find it. And uh, Dan said he took care of Carolyn. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the only old business. Did you get that Carol Lamont problem fixed? <laughs> <laughs> Great, we've been working on that for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you took care of it in one, one meeting. Sad but true. All right, well, if there's no further business, I would entertain a motion for a German. So no, man, there's a lot. I'll second that. All right. We are officially adjourned. No. No.